Jess here and today, oh gosh, Danish butter cookies are back. I'm gonna put these down first though. Dear God. So if you're new to the channel, I've covered Danish butter cookies before, but I felt it was unresolved. It really was a video I shot in five minutes based on what I found in the pharmacy. And through the comments, I found a few things that I agreed on and wanted to retest. One, I really needed to try Kelsen's, which is actually over here today. And two, I needed to try them with tea, ideally milky tea. So we'll do both tests today. That being said, for those of you who wanted me to try Kelsen's, Royal Donsk is made by the same company. Just the thing I found when I was searching this out. And I also picked up the brand Danisa, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right, because it was at my local co-op and I thought, why not continue the tradition of finding cookies somewhere and putting them in the video. I'm gonna start with Denisa, Denisa, because it's right here and this is heavy. They're all lovely golden brown, but also I'm noticing immediately is it looks like we've got currants in this round. Okay, it smells very buttery, but it's kind of a sweet buttery note with a little bit of that coconut in the background. And this time, like last time, I'm gonna try my favorite, which is the pretzel shape. I just love the sugar balance on these. Cheers. It's what I think of as a Danish butter cookie. It's sweet, it's buttery, there's a little hint of coconut in the background, kind of a rounding note, and it's very dry. Very, very dry. Like, I'm gonna get some water dry. I will say the water helps, it makes it more of a delicate cookie. I can get more of the flavor, but it's very much butter-based. Butter and that nice caramelization at the end. Just a good solid dry cookie. Next. Last time, Victor, Royal Donsk. So one thing that's nice here, unlike with the Denisa, is that you've got a lot of information about the cookies themselves, which I think is quite handy. Pretzel again. This is much sweeter. Like the sugar comes through as a really sharp note, and then the butter underneath it. I'm really preferring the Denisa so far just to have that much butter in a butter cookie, but it's got a lot of vanilla as well. So it's a sweet and sharp cookie in comparison and a bit more crumbly. And I will say there's kind of an artificialness going on that I don't remember from last time, which someone had commented that Royal Dawn's could change their recipe, and I believe them based on that. That is a different cookie than what I remember. The Dennisa is much, much closer. Even with water, it's just very sweet. I'm gonna try their coconut. It's a far more buttery cookie, even with the coconut in there. This is the butter cookie. It does very much taste of sweet and dried coconut, though, so you barely like that sweetness in your coconut, but it's a crisp buttery cookie with a strong coconut note. Okay, backing up, I wanna try the current crunch actually now, given how that went. I did say this would be more thorough and I'm just going for it here. So let's try the current crunch. I'm not really getting a crunch as much as the cookie is much airier. And so you get a more gentle crispness as opposed to that heaviness closer to shortbread. And the currants are in there giving a little bit of chew, which is really nice. I actually, I'm really just liking this box altogether. Last, certainly not least, for round one, we have the Geldsen. We got by appointments at the Danish court, very fancy. This is a ton of cookie. This was the only size I could get, it's just cookie for days. I'm gonna go back to pretzel for my classic, cheers. It's got a similar softness to Royal Donsk. There's a note in there though I'm having trouble placing that is kind of artificial, sadly. It's not really floral, it's not like coconut, just sort of in the background, kind of like how I think of vanillin. Well, I will say that vanilla is not actually listed as an ingredient, so it could be vanillin, but it's a similar dryness, a similar vanilla E note. There's butter, but it's not super strong. It's really sugar first. I want to try their current one though. It's a very drying cookie, but it reminds me a lot of eating a super crispy oatmeal raisin cookie with currants instead of raisins. Very dry though, very dry, wow. Round one goes to Dunisa. Like, this is the one that tastes the most like a butter cookie. It's got butter, it's got sugar, it's got vanilla. It tastes like what I remember. More so than Royal Dance does right now. I'm kind of having like a moment of confusion over that. But yeah, point Dunisa. Round two, tea time. This is the house standard milk tea. It's an Assam with a lot of milk and a lot of brown and demerara sugar just because that's what sugar I felt like putting in today. It makes a pretty strong cuppa, I will say that. We're gonna start with Royal Donsk and their country style cookie, mainly because I thought like the most neutral and least amount of sugar would be a good one to start here. I don't add a ton of sugar to an already sweet tea. Oh, well, let's try. The tea softens the cookie's texture, so it goes from being very dry to something that's more like a shortbread with a little bit of give and a little bit of softness and a nice chew. 
I do think it improves the texture considerably, but I'm not really getting a better of the similar parts thing here. I'm having tea, I'm having a cookie, and together there's kind of soft tea cookie, and I want something to happen there and I'm not getting it. Next, we'll try the Kelsons, same thing. The texture sticks around more, which I really appreciate that it's not just completely dissolving in the tea. But again, it's just kind of sweet vanilla. I'm not really getting much else or much of a benefit. Dunking does help here. It's just enough liquid from the tea that the cookie stays together really well. And you get a little bit more of a tea flavor and a lot more of the butter. So it actually enhances the butteriness quite a fair bit. Kelsen, at least, is a much better cookie in the tea. Last, not least, Donisa. With the tea, the most tender, the most vanilla flavored. Dang, really nice. Try it dunked. It's still quite a crisp cookie, even with a bit of tea in it, but it gives better, closer again to shortbread, and it's really nice. I get a really nice vanilla note at the end. I'm really liking how it tastes with the tea. Yeah, point again to Donisa. All right, there is definitely something to be said for buying cookies on a whim when it comes to Danish butter cookies, because the one I picked up on a whim wins again. It's got the most butter, it's got the most vanilla, it holds its own in tea. This is the cookie I'd get next year based on how things are going. I don't know what's happening with Royal Dansk and Kelsen. Maybe there was an internal change because same company and they have very similar textures and similar notes. Basically, if I was getting a cookie from a tin right now, I would get these, the Donisa. Note that I said though, from a tin, because my actual favorite Danish butter cookie are the ones I've been making. A few weeks ago, I was all, you know what? I need to compare to Danish butter cookies. How hard are they to make? Can't be that hard to make. Turns out they're not that hard to make at all. These are from Gemma of Bigger Boulder Baking, and I have been adoring them. I've been making like half batches with half an egg, just because it's a lot of butter. Like four ounces of butter and half an egg. Also, these are better on day two. The downside you're gonna have is that they're very heavy on the vanilla, at least this version. I'm gonna tweak it some more personally. And then also they're not very crisp. So if you're looking for a crisp cookie to have with tea, this is not the victor. I still will go back to Donisa. You know, I've never had them with tea, so let's try it. That's really good, actually. It mellows out the vanilla, so you have a tea-scented, softly buttery cookie. So either I hope you try Donisa or make some yourself. I get not always wanting to make cookies, and these last a really long time, so do whatever your heart desires and whatever your sewing kit needs desire, because clearly everyone needs a good sewing kit and some cookies. So that wraps up my second take on Danish butter cookies. Donisa, the unexpected winner. Still gonna make lots of cookies at home too. And actually, I'd love to know in the comments if you have a favorite cookie or a favorite recipe, because clearly I didn't cover everybody. I didn't even cover every flavor of these brands. There's way more to cover here. But there's always gonna be an awesome sewing kit waiting for all of you, hopefully. And with that, I will catch you next time. Later! I feel like with this many sewing kits, I should diversify. Like maybe the top one will be a sewing kit and the bottom for crochet. I haven't decided yet options.